Guys, in case you were wondering how to treat a patient with pulmonary edema, this is the best way to do it as per the New York City protocols. When you arrive on scene, you know that a person is in acute pulmonary edema when they are diaphoretic, which means they're sweating without being physically active. They're hypertensive. They'll have pedal edema or signs of retaining fluid. It could be ascites, which means that their abdomen is going to be enlarged. And pedal edema, which means that their uh, ankles are going to be swollen. So you arrive on scene and you find a person with water in their lungs. There's a short term of saying it. That's something that they understand. A patient, you ask them, you ever have water in your lungs? And they'll most likely reply to that instead of asking them, have you had acute pulmonary edema? So you ask them, you ever have water in your lungs? Most of them are, if they have, if they have full blown APE, they're not going to be able to speak to you in full sentences. So you could deduce it based on the cardinal signs that I mentioned, which is hypertension, diaphoresis, and signs of retaining fluid. Most of the time, you'll find it in pedal edema. So the first thing you do is you put them on the monitor, on the cardiac monitor. You put them on the pulse ox. You take their blood pressure. You could also do an EKG and realize that the reason why you want to do a, a 3 lead EKG and a 12 lead EKG is because one of the signs, one of, one of the causes of acute pulmonary edema is pump failure or the cause of acute pulmonary edema is pump failure or fluid overload. So if the person's having a myocardial infarction, then they're definitely having pump failure. And that's why you want to do a 12 lead. Uh, it's not the number one thing. It's not the first thing uh, that you should do. You should definitely treat the uh, emergent situation. But keep that in mind, please. Do a, do a 12 lead if, if time permits and if the situation permits. So you get your vital signs. You find the person to be hypoxic. Uh, confirm it with a manual BP cuff, if anything. Then you put the person on oxygen. Once you put the person on oxygen, uh, preferably if you're working with another paramedic, uh, you guys are multitasking. So one is setting up the oxygen while the other one starts an IV. All right. Once you get intravenous access, oh, one thing about the IV, I got to say, uh, you're not going to be giving any fluids to this patient per se, unless they're like in cardiogenic shock or something. And even even at that, you're going to give probably a maximum of 500, 500 cc's. So if you could only get a 22 gauge, then go for the 22 gauge IV. Even though the caliber is not ideal, go with what, go with what the person uh, has available. Um, one of the most important things to treat with is nitroglycerin. All right, it decreases the preload, it decreases the oxygen demand, the cardiac oxygen demand, and it's a great treatment for the EAP. And you also have Lasix. This is a loop diuretic that helps <coughs> the person uh, remove the fluid from the body. Depending on the mechanism of the acute pulmonary edema, depends what you should put emphasis on. Example, if the, if the reason why the person is in acute pulmonary edema is heart failure, CHF, then the nitro is going to be much more beneficial than the, than the Lasix. But if the person is in acute pulmonary edema because they missed their dialysis then the nitro along with the lasix is prudent so once again if it's pump failure the nitro trumps the lasix but if it's fluid overload then you should give the nitro along with the lasix now i'm not saying that if it's pump failure you should not give the lasix i'm just saying what you should put emphasis on when deciding what to use first. Oh, you have the CPAP. The way I would do it is, I'll put the person on a non-rebreather. If that doesn't help, then I will move, transition to the CPAP. If the CPAP doesn't help, then I'll transition to the intubation. And I will call telemetry for midazolam and for Lasix. The midazolam is an anxiolytic that'll help them relax because if a person is having a hard time breathing, they're definitely going to have uh, or most likely going to be combative and they're going to be anxious. So the midazolam is given for that reason. You call telemetry or online medical control for that. And you also call for the Lasix. Now, just one thing about Lasix, know that it causes electrolyte imbalances and it's got consequences. But in an emer emergency setting, the 
risk outweigh the benefit and you give it but keep that in mind please also with the nitro you must check the blood pressure every five minutes just to make sure that the person doesn't uh bottom out because this lowers your blood pressure if the person's high blood has high blood pressure this will help them lower it but keep in mind that if the blood pressure is below 100 systolic then you should withheld this and this should be given every five minutes so once again you arrive on scene put the person on the monitor look for the cardinal signs of ape you could confirm the blood pressure if it's really high if they're diaphoretic they're having a hard time breathing they tell you that they have water in their lungs in the past then obviously it's most likely a p right put the person on oxygen on a non-rebreather 15 liters per minute start the iv while you're doing that also give the nitro check the blood pressure every five minutes before you give the nitro if the blood pressure is still high give the nitro then call for lasix and if none of that works Put the person on CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. And the reason why you want to do this is because one of the reasons is because it improves oxygen uh, diffusion at the at the rate or oxygen oxygen exchange at the rate of the alveoli. And if that doesn't work, the person gets in, goes into respiratory arrest, it becomes deteri the person deteriorates. Then you proceed on to the intubation, and always notify the hospital. Uh, before you get to the hospital if possible so they could be ready with the respiratory team with the respiratory team and or etc all right guys i hope this helps please share it with someone that you think will need it and i'll see you in the next one peace